Hey everybody. Today, I'm gonna talk about Black Mirror. I've been a pretty big fan of this show ever since it came out. It was always polished and well-written, and besides, I'm just a sucker for high-concept Twilight Zone-ish things. I can't help it, it's in my blood at this point. But in Season 3 and 4, when Black Mirror became a Netflix original series, things started to get weird, and in my opinion, kinda bad. Increasingly, I came to have a sense of detachment from the show. I watched and enjoyed it, but didn't feel quite as connected to the episodes, or as satisfied by their conclusions. And when I tried to explain to myself why this shift happened, I kept coming up short. The show was still polished, right? There was still fun technology, and it was still well written. So what went wrong for me? Well, I think that if we're gonna get it how Black Mirror changed, we can't just analyze its craft, the way it tells its stories or writes its characters. We also have to look at the show's politics and how it goes about producing meaning. So that's what I'm gonna do in this video, and hopefully we'll come to a few conclusions. Two disclaimers. First, I'm gonna completely spoil a few episodes of this show. I guess that kind of comes with the territory, but I would recommend seeing at least some Black Mirror before watching this. Second, for the sake of clarity, I'm only gonna talk about a few later episodes of Black Mirror. That might strike you as wrong somehow. I mean, how can I presume to criticize the show if I'm not even going to talk about your favorite episode? And that's fair enough, but I'm not aiming for big, absolute statements here. I'm more concerned with a general thematic trend. I'm going to start this video by giving us a baseline for how Black Mirror traditionally gets its ideas across. More than anything, Seasons 1 and 2 want to show us a tension between human nature and technological progress. Look at the episode Be Right Back. It's about a woman whose husband dies in a freak accident and who decides to get a robo-replacement of him. That's a bit creepy, what you're doing. Here, the show presents us with a problem and a solution. The problem is that when we lose people, we often look for ways to keep them alive in some sense. The solution is that one day, through technology, we might be able to do just that. Construct robots that look and act somewhat like our dead person. At first, this solution seems perfect. We hate it when people die, technology can replace those people, bada bing, bada boom. But ultimately, both the audience and the protagonist realize that it's not as simple as that. Rather than filling a hole in her life, this AI man just ends up reminding her of her loss. You're not enough of him! You are nothing! You're nothing! So we can see the problem and the solution here as somehow incompatible. The experience of grief and loss can't be meaningfully fixed through technology. And we see this approach popping up in a lot of the show. We have a problem. Our memory is fragile and incomplete. The episode The Entire History of You presents us with a solution, an enhanced form of Google Glasses that records all of our experiences. But with this technology, the protagonist is enabled to obsess indefinitely about the state of his family, and he ends up destroying all his relationships. It's like I've had a bad tooth for years, and I'm just finally getting my tongue in there, and I'm digging out all the rotten shit. We have a problem. People commit crimes, and we want to punish them in ways that feel fair. The episode White Bear gives us a solution. We can publicly shame people and wipe their memories so they're forced to truly face the consequences of their actions. But because of this tech, we are now able to put our main character in a personal, never-ending hell. And, you know, that doesn't seem quite right. Now that we have this basic idea of how Black Mirror structures its episodes, we can understand what it's trying to say. See, all of the three episodes I just mentioned share a common political perspective. They're skeptical of where society is going. The show rejects the idea that progress is an unquestioned good. It presents us with a brimming, bright world of amazing tech, but instead of glorifying that, it shows us examples of where that can fail us as people, or lead to undesirable outcomes. So, with all this in mind, let's jump forward to the Season 3 episode, Playtest. It's about an American in England who goes to playtest a new video game and who, uh, dies as a result. And when you squint your eyes at it for a while, you can see how the episode is aiming for something like what Season 1 and 2 did. 
On one hand, people like immersive gameplay, and they're attracted to things that will give them that. On the other, we have this Nutsoid device that provides an overly immersive experience. When you have it on, you can't tell what's real from what's fake. And so it looks like the episode is questioning the role of progress. You know, do we really want to get to a point where gaming technology is this advanced? And honestly, just saying this out loud, I feel a bit ridiculous. Because this episode doesn't really pose a question or make a point. In fact, it doesn't quite say anything at all. The most obvious place we can see this is with the end of the story. See, the main character dies at the end, and the episode reveals that he died the second they put the VR machine in him and his phone went off. None of his mental experiences were actually caused by the device, they were just the impact of random neurons firing in the instant before his death. And besides, the protagonist gets his deadly phone call right when the playtest starts. So we have no idea what this company was experimenting with or why. This ending effectively tells the audience that this isn't real. None of it is in any way related to VR gaming or technological progress. Really, the only thing this episode could be saying is don't start experimental trials before your game is foolproof. Uh, don't turn on your cell phone when you're asked not to. And to these messages, I say a resounding, okay. But let's pretend for a second that Playtest doesn't have this strange ending, that this VR section was meaningfully connected to the episode's technology. Well, even in that case, it still doesn't say much. I mean, Dude tries out some speculative headgear, he goes into a state where he can't tell reality from fantasy, and then he dies as a result. What exactly am I supposed to think about that? Where the first two seasons are thoughtfully skeptical, this episode is just mindlessly reactionary. Is cool tech bad? It does weird stuff, it sometimes kills people. Maybe it's bad, you guys. And we're gonna see this political shift popping up throughout the third and fourth seasons. More and more, the show looks like it's saying something pointed, but for a variety of reasons, it winds up expressing very little. Let's look at Nosedive, another season three episode. The plot centers around one conceit. What if social media progressed such that we rated each other on every interaction? And that's a pretty good idea, I think. I'm anxious about social media, I use it all the time. And the premise of Nosedive seems like a great place to explore questions related to that stuff. But there are a few things about this episode that make it so it can't really convey any idea or question technology in a meaningful way. For one, the world of Nosedive doesn't make much sense. So many people here, our protagonist included, act totally fakey all the time. And we're supposed to think that this is because of the pressure created through new social media. You know, gotta put on a fun show to get high ratings and all that. <laughs> but this just doesn't ring true to me. After all, we already live in a society where everyone tries to gain social capital. We're all already trying to look cool for each other. But we don't have to act fake all the time to accomplish that. I mean, nobody likes phony people, and when we meet a tryhard like our protagonist or her weird friend, we generally avoid that person or think they're lame. And I don't see why all that would change with a new social media craze. This episode artificially constructs a situation to make new technology feel as worthless as possible. Social media isn't a tool here. It's not a form of expression or a space to connect to people. It's just a thing that makes people act annoying. And in this world, the only way to win with social media is not to play. The main character is reminded by both her brother and a cool truck driving grandma that this technology has made her and society at large completely vapid. And in the end, she's able to find real joy not by changing the system or her relationship to it, but through the act of full-blown escape. Fuck you for Christmas! The episode doesn't feel like it wants to take social media seriously. It just feels like it wants to shit on teenage girls because they take pictures of their food. Isn't this a stupid thing she's doing? I am so much better than this. Just like in Playtest, the specific political lens of Older Black Mirror is replaced with one general statement. I don't like the new tech thingy. Okay, let's move on to Archangel, a season 4 episode. 
and hopefully I can make this section a little shorter because it suffers from a lot of these same problems. Again, the episode presents us with what could be a thought-provoking premise. What if parents could be as overprotective as they wanted to be with the help of a new brain implant they could pop in their kid? But again, various things about the episode cause it to express very little about progress or technology. To start, the technology in Archangel is patently ridiculous. I mean, I can understand putting a location tracker in your kid. I can even understand wanting to be able to see what they see. But this technology also allows parents to filter high-stress things from a child's sight. Content limitations. If she witnesses something that causes her cortisol levels to rise, like stress, it can kind of paint out whatever's triggering it. And that is the strangest, most obviously bad idea I can imagine. Doing this would result in your kid not being able to see the car that was going to hit her. It would result in her not being able to make out wounds on her body or notice when a dog is about to attack. Blocking out stressful stuff in this way would put your child in mortal danger on a daily basis. And I don't think a lot of parents would be into that. The episode is even aware of how terrible this idea is. In one scene, a doctor says this. The Archangel never launched nationwide. It was banned in Europe. It'll be pulled here too by the fall. Uh, I guess we're in agreement here, Black Mirror. Even in a world where we were able to make this thing, we wouldn't have to worry because the government would ban it immediately. So we have a technological innovation that's absolutely nonsensical, but the characters don't act in a believable way with it either. I don't know about you, but when the protagonist started brutally beating her mom, I couldn't help but laugh. I mean, the main character hasn't had her vision censored in years. She knows that hitting people hurts them, so... Why is she doing this, exactly? I get that the episode is trying to make a statement about how when you shield your kids from scary things, they grow up to lack empathy, but her actions here are just too much to feel genuine or authentic. These two elements combine to make the episode far too narrow to say anything substantial about society. If you give a nonsense device to some nonsense people, they're gonna do some nonsense with it. And I can watch that and like it fine, but it doesn't force me to think about anything at all. So there's a key change in the way that Black Mirror works, a shift in its attitude. And the culmination of this change is the final episode of season four, Black Museum. I'm certainly not the first person to say this, but Black Museum can easily be read as a sort of meta-narrative about the way we appreciate Black Mirror. The episode consists mostly of three vignettes that are told to us by a douchebag joker. But pulling the lever yourself? Now that's an attraction. The first one is about a dude who derives pleasure through the pain of others. The second is about a woman who can only interact with the world vicariously. And the third centers on an alleged murderer whose suffering is copied and distributed among tourists. And you can just see how the episode is pointing to the audience with these stories. It implicates that you're like this guy, because when you watch Black Mirror, you enjoy it when people suffer. You're like this woman, absorbing media from a totally passive position. You're like the people at this museum, who in turn are a bit like this guy, because, you know, they like to watch people suffer. But what's being presupposed by this episode is that this is the way people want to enjoy Black Mirror. We don't like that it makes us think about things or that it expresses something vital about society. We're just in it for the lulls. Charlie Brooker is essentially hitting a guy over the head with a sledgehammer, turning to us and saying, you guys should really think about the way you absorb media. But here's the thing, that's not what Black Mirror has to be. We've seen it accomplish more than that. The show here is drinking its own Kool-Aid. It has wholesale adopted the belief that its role isn't to question progress or look critically at technology. It's just here to show us gratuitous nonsense. And because of that, the only question it can now really ask is, why do you like this stuff? Well, uh, I don't like it. I think it's gotten pretty old. So, uh, that's basically everything I had to say about Black Mirror. Uh, that was pretty harsh, and I imagine some people will, you know, disagree with me about some of those things I said. 
And with all of my videos, as well as this one, uh, that's fine. I would love to be given a more charitable reading of some of the episodes I talked about here. I want to like Black Mirror, I just kind of don't anymore right now. But anyway, uh, thanks for watching, like, comment, and subscribe, and if you have any questions for me, uh, please go to my Curious Cat account and ask me them anonymously so I won't even know it's you. See you next time.